Hello again. Welcome to our number two of Dining Around with Gene Burns, 1108, Saturday, the 29th of January. We are gathered here to say goodbye to January, which is departing. And uh, we're talking food, wine, and travel on Dining Around. As you know, if you're a regular listener to KGO, uh, the KGO All-Stars gathered at the Alameda Theater last night for a live broadcast of a debate among the five of us who are the regularly scheduled daily hosts here on KGO. My distinguished colleagues, uh, Ron Owens, Gil Gross, John Rothman, and Ray Tyler Ferro and myself uh, duped it out on the issues of the day. And one of the things that made it pleasant was the wine we were drinking, which was provide, provided by our next guest, uh, R&B. Now, this is really funny. You know, some, I, I'm tempted to say that when you're, when, you, when you're feeling a dull pain in the back of your head, it is quite likely someone is banging you in the head, and there may be a reason for it. So I'm sitting looking at the notes earlier today, and looking at the names of the people, and the names uh, of our people are Kevin Brown and uh, Barbara Brown, and uh, the company is R and B. Okay, Brown is B. What's who's the R? What's the R? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't find the R, and I read down a little further, and it turns out that R and B is R and B rhythm and blues. <laughs> These two guys are, among other things, accomplished musicians, vocalists, and. Uh, and now in the wine business, and I'm, uh, I'm anxious. To, I love to hear the back, the background stories of how people uh, got into the to the wine business. So R and B Cellars is represented by Kevin Brown and Barbara Brown, winemaker and co-owner uh, Kevin and co-owner Barbara, and husband and wife and dynamic duo, uh, joining us to talk about their wine. Welcome to Dining Around. Thank, well, thank you. you very much. Now you guys. Knew you each, knew each other in high school. You you have a long standing Correct. association. Long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where was that? Was that in New York? That was in Wilton, Connecticut. Oh. So we were um, we were actually real good buddies back in in, in high school. Um, uh, you can't say that we were high school sweethearts because well, let's see. Kevin I had, had goofy hair. It, well, he had. <laughs> like, let's put it this way. He he had the curly haired persons lopsided 70s hairdo <laughs> so if you, you you can picture that right I and then can, if you yeah. put that on a string bean body um anyway i know he nothing was nothing to look at is what you're I saying loved him. <laughs> <laughs> well here's the interesting part is that um you know we went off to college and, right. and forgot about each other we had a high school reunion it happened to be of this particular uh singing group that we had been in in high school and at the kickoff party he walks up to um, my friend Allison and me, and he says, hello, Allison, hello, Barbara. And Allison, we sort of had this, you know, look on her face, stricken look like, who, who is this? And I said, Allison, who is it? And she said, Kevin? <laughs> and that, because we did not recognize him, because he had morphed into this handsome man. Right, exactly. And, um, but he, we knew the voice. <laughs> and the fun part about it for me was that um, I intentionally hid my name tag because I look so different from what I'd been in high school, I figured it was a lot more fun for me to go around and have people try and identify who I was. Oh, sure. It was more fun to play that game. Well, sure, and at, at a reunion like that, everybody's lying to each other anyway. You know, you have to change the <laughs> bit. You look terrific. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. You, you, now, Wilton, isn't that where the cake, big cake decorating Wilton comes out of Wilton, Connecticut? I'm not sure. I don't expect you to know. Yeah. I'm not sure on that. Um, that's, that's me. I have a dust catcher mind. The little bits of things <laughs> fall. They, they stay in there for decades. Uh, I think Wilton is where they have the, one of the big uh, cake decorating businesses. Okay, well, never, we're not here talking about cake decorating. <laughs> so you, you guys were involved in the music business. That was your principal occupation? Yes. Well, for both of us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean you started out that way. I, I started out as a jazz pianist in New York um, in the late 70s and the early 80s, and right. I found out it was a great way to starve and not to pay your bills very well, so I was working retail uh, gig in a hi-fi store at the same time that I was, you know, trying to get active jazz gigs, and you finally got to a point where you said, there's got to be a better way, and a friend of mine worked at a wholesaler, a wine wholesaler, and I'd always enjoyed wine, loved wine, and he said, look, you're a great salesman, you like to do that, he said, why don't you get in the wine business? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you leave one thing, you know, to because you can't make a, a good living and uh, or make a lot of money doing it, and then you get into the wine business, because I thought I could make a lot of money in that business, and the old joke is if you want to make a small fortune in the wine business, start with a large one. A large one, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, the, the, uh, but you, at that time, you were in the wine sales business. Yeah, I was on the sales and marketing side for a number of years. I've been in the business for about 30 years. Now, how long, when did you actually move to California? 
That was about six years ago. Oh, yeah. so you had so you had already. Don't I recall reading that you Rosenblum Sellers, which is in yeah. Alameda, was mm -hmm. a client of yours, and you helped in the growth of their. Yeah, I was the director of sales and marketing for them for about fourteen years. Right, right. So, so. Alameda and wine were not unknown to you. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. For when me, it was all new. <laughs> it wasn't all new? Oh, yeah. 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 I lived in New York um, all my adult life, and right. I was um, a, a professional flutist, and I was a music, music educator, and a choral director, and so that was what my gig was. I liked wine, right. but I didn't know very much about it. <laughs> right. and, and, but he told you it'd be okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he assured me that <laughs> yeah, exactly. it would all work out. And if he could turn himself from a spring bean into what he became, yeah. he, maybe he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, uh, so you decided, you moved six years ago, is that when you decided to get in the wine business making wine? No, I actually started, the first wines I made was while I was at Rosenblum, was in 95. Oh. And I made some Zinfandel, and it was really just for a lark. I made one barrel, uh, well, two different barrels, one of each two different wines. One was called A, the other was called B. And, you know, very clever labels, it was right. just little lab strip labels, and we just did it just for the fun of it. And um, I, I really enjoyed it, and it was one of the great things about being friends with Kent Rosenblum. I mean, he and I have been friends for uh, many, many years, and he's so uh, open and giving and sharing about his knowledge and, and approach to making wine, and that's where I learned what I learned. Yeah. It's all from Kent. Yeah. We're talking with the folks from R&B Vineyards, uh, R&B Wines, uh, in Alameda. Alameda is this... Uh, little jewel that's hiding over there in the East Bay if you haven't been there lately. It really has developed into a wonderful destination for fine restaurants, wonderful wineries, a uh, great marketplace has developed there, um, and and the reno that they've done on the Alameda Theater is just spectacular. Really very, very good. We're talking with these folks from Alameda. We have a couple of restaurants from Alameda in our next segment, so put Alameda on your uh, list of places to go soon if you haven't been there recently. We'll continue our conversation with our guest just ahead. After judging 4,913 wines from across the country, the judges of the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition have made their selections, and they invite you to the 10th Annual Public Tasting, Saturday, February 20th, 